to another episode of Access Ability. It's a show on YouTube where I talk about the video game industry, accessibility, and representation. Basically, how can we help more people to play games, and more people to see themselves in the games they play? I'm your host, Laura. I'm a white woman with bright blue hair, shaved on one side, wearing a plain black dress. One thing I don't talk about very often is that I have a family history of a couple of different mental health conditions that can impact the ability to store and recall short-term memory. I myself have had my own battles with memory issues. I went until the age of 30 before I got diagnosed with ADHD, which meant that for most of my life I have had real difficulty with storing and recalling short-term memories. Talking a little bit about myself, people with ADHD have issues with short-term memory because of a lack of dopamine in the brain. The theory is, we're always dopamine seeking because we don't have enough dopamine in the brain, and as a result we're not focusing on things in the kind of way that makes forming and recalling memories easy to do. For me, this has gotten a lot better since I started medication earlier this year, but it's still something that for many, many years impacted my ability to play video games the same way everyone else does. So today, on Access Ability, we're going to be talking about short-term memory issues and how they relate to video games. We're going to talk about a handful of conditions that can cause people to have short-term memory loss. We're going to talk about the fact that most people playing video games today will at some point in their life have to deal with this, and some of the ways that video games can make themselves more accessible to people with short-term memory issues to make sure that people can keep playing the games they love. Let's start off by talking a little bit about some of the conditions which can impact a person's ability to store and recall short-term memories. I talked a little about ADHD in the opening of this video, but it's far from the only common mental health condition that impacts memory storage and recall. Aphantasia, a condition where a person struggles to imagine and recall visual information, can have an impact on short-term memory as it relates to visual information. A lack of sleep can cause memory issues, meaning that they can impact people with conditions such as sleep apnea or insomnia. Stress, anxiety, and depression all impact the brain's ability to store and create memories, as can certain medications. Additionally, conditions such as hypothyroidism can impact memory. Lastly, in more extreme cases, conditions such as dementia or a brain tumour can have very dramatic impacts on memory. So, why does the lack of a short-term memory matter when it comes to video games? Well, a lot of modern video games contain lengthy plots, shifting puzzles, and puzzles involving short-term memory retention. If you're playing Among Us, you might need to remember whether or not you're the imposter. Or while playing Inscription, you might need to remember the solution to a card-based puzzle, or what cards are currently in your deck to access. If you're playing an open-world game, you might need to remember what you were last doing, and in a narrative-heavy choice-based game, you might need to remember which group of people is which, and what their motivations are. Now, many of you watching this video today may not currently have any issues with your short-term memory, but memory is one of those things that ultimately, at some point, is likely to impact everyone who plays video games, to a greater or lesser degree. Anyone who plays video games could have a head injury tomorrow, or could develop depression, or could go through a deeply stressful event that causes PTSD, or develop a sleeping condition, and quickly find themselves struggling with memory. And beyond that, all of us are ageing. As those of us who love video games age, a larger and larger number of elderly gamers are going to develop memory issues as a natural part of ageing. In decades to come, this will be an issue that impacts basically everyone, and it's worth being invested in seeing video games adapt in time that they stay welcoming when you eventually need that support. So, what can video games do to help players with short-term memory issues? Well, games like Alan Wake feature periodic recaps of the plot to remind the player what has happened and what is currently happening. In a similar vein, certain Pokemon games provide the player with a text reminder of their progress they can read back through every time they boot the game up. For games with cutscenes, allowing the player to re-watch any past cutscene on demand as soon as it is played the first time is incredibly helpful. Having an on-screen minimap with markers and waypoint finding can help those with poor visual memory who can't remember a map once they're not looking at it. Games that feature randomised elements from pools of possible items should allow you to check the total pool of options and what they do, so you can make informed choices about your actions without needing to hold your options in memory. For games with lots of text, allowing the player to read a text log and scroll backwards through conversations can really help remind them what's happening. 
quest logs and map markers in open world games can help players to check what they were planning to do, or in the process of doing. Screenshot functionality is really useful for games with visual puzzles that you have to keep in short term memory, as being able to take screenshots and check them on demand allows players to quickly reference the answer when they're in the location the answer needs inputting, rather than having to remember it while they walk between locations. The Phoenix Wright games contain in-game glossaries of items, clues, and people which can be checked at any time for a mental refresher. But, and this is perhaps the biggest ask of our industry, we need to think about implementing reminders around in-game microtransactions. As more and more gamers age and start having memory-related issues, we're likely to experience a whole new wave of issues with people overspending on microtransactions beyond their means due to not remembering the purchases they've made, and games right now are more than happy to let you spend over and over and over again without pointing out that you're doing it. We've seen in the past that impulse control conditions can cause people to spend beyond their means on in-game microtransactions, but memory issues can also lead to this same result, and that is going to impact a lot more gamers in the decades to come than most people would like to admit. Short-term memory loss is one of those disabilities that is going to impact most people in their lives at some point to some degree. There's a reason that in disability circles often people without disabilities will be referred to as people who are not yet disabled, because a lot of things that we consider disabilities will happen to people as they age, and here's the thing. You shouldn't need to be impacted by a disability to care about accessibility for the people that benefit from it, but on a purely self-centred note, most of you should care about this, because someday you are going to be older, and you're going to still want to play video games, and you're going to find it more difficult. Short-term memory issues don't have to be dramatic to be distressing. I've had situations where I've picked up a game after a couple of days away and not been able to remember what I was doing, or where I was going, or how a mechanic works, and not being able to just simply and easily find that information left me sat with that feeling of not being able to remember, and that's really scary sometimes. All of these reminder tools are really simple to implement, and the truth is, whether you need them today or whether you need them decades down the line, they're going to be really helpful for someone, at some point, to feel a little less distressed when their brain, for whatever reason, doesn't properly store a piece of information. 